Developing tonight, we have an update on the district attorney controversy that's been happening in the San Luis Valley. Denver 7 investigative reporter Jennifer Kovaleski is following up on months of in-depth reporting on the DA's questionable plea deals. And Jen voters elected a new DA, but she is now questioning the state's continued involvement. Anna and Jessica, and she's firing back. But first, here's some context. This all started back in July when former DA Alonzo Payne resigned. He left his elected position days after Colorado's attorney general found his office violated the state's victim's rights law. The AG's office ordered an independent monitor to oversee his office. The newly elected DA doesn't think she needs it and says her office simply can't afford it. But the attorney general didn't back down at a special meeting called this morning. I know this group doesn't usually have special meetings. Sitting around a crowded conference table in Alamosa. But I think this is an important um, for our area. County commissioners from around the San Luis Valley, along with newly elected 12th Judicial District Attorney Ann Kelly, voice frustrations with Colorado's Attorney General. But it is unnecessary. The problem has been solved. The, um, the people of the Valley want the AG's office to leave and let us heal on our own. At the center of this story is an agreement Attorney General Phil Weiser made with former District Attorney Alonzo Payne. Weiser's office found Payne disrespected crime victims and violated the law. Payne later resigned and was banned from practicing law in Colorado. The agreement ordered the DA's office to retain an outside monitor chosen by the state and funded by the DA's office. This is not at all punitive. This is not going to take long. This is not going to cost much money. I mean, we are living in, I'm living in the poorest part of Colorado. We struggle. We have very little resources. And for the attorney general to come in and say $10,000 is just, it's not that much. It is. DA Kelly agreed to answer our questions after the meeting. What is your message to the attorney general? I would like the attorney general to realize that in order to assist this valley, in order to actually help us, that he needs to back off your new district attorney. Governor Jared Polis appointed Kelly to run the office shortly after Payne resigned. Voters elected her to hold the position permanently in November. Since then, she's earned the trust of her community and cut a 300 case backlog in half. Which included sex assaults, um, uh, violent felonies. We wouldn't be suggesting this monitor if we didn't think it was going to be useful and helpful as part of the process. And we do. The role here of this monitor is really more as a mentor and a coach to help us bring this chapter to a close. I have been a career prosecutor and I know when I need help and I am able to ask for it. I simply don't need a coach to the extent that requires me to take away from the work that I'm doing. She is passionate about this issue. Kelly was elected to a four year term. Countless county leaders spoke in support of her at today's meeting. They also questioned the cost of paying for the monitor when Kelly has turned the office around. The AG's office tells us they've contacted Kelly following that meeting to discuss next steps. And so Jen, the new DA has proposed an option here that wouldn't cost the DA's office any money. This is really interesting, Anne. So Kelly says the Colorado District Attorney's Council agreed to serve as the monitor for free, but she says the attorney general rejected that offer. Kelly says she's hopeful the two sides can reach an agreement and soon hmm. we will keep you posted. Okay, we'll count on you. Thank you, Jen. And to see